Hi, my name is Jovan and today you'll be learning how to control a virtual camera in Unreal Engine with an iOS device using the LiveLink vCam for Unreal Engine app. This is the newly updated LiveLink app as opposed to the old Unreal Remote 2 app and this will be done in Unreal Engine 5 which is now in full release. This app allows you to use a virtual camera in your scene which can be really helpful for placing cameras, doing scene scouting and actually recording takes if you want to as well with some realistic motion along with a whole bunch of other features that are included in this app. So, to start, you need to download the iOS VCam app from the App Store. This app is only available on iOS devices at the moment, and only works on iOS devices with ARKit enabled, which is anything from around the iPhone 6, so if you have anything recent, it'll work fine. You'll also need to enable the following plugins in Unreal Engine. So you need to enable the Virtual Camera plugin, the LiveLink plugin, the Apple ARKit plugin, and the Remote Session plugin. To do this, go to the top left corner of your Unreal Engine scene, press Edit, plugins and search for each of these plugins and make sure they're ticked to be enabled. There will be a prompt in the bottom right corner of your screen saying restart now. You need to click this in order to actually apply the plugins into your current scene. Once you have these plugins enabled, go to your project settings in your Unreal Engine project by going to the top left corner again, pressing edit and going to project settings. In project settings, on the left hand side of your screen, scroll down to where it says plugins and find a tab called UDP messaging. To find the IP address of your computer, open up the command prompt or the terminal window of your computer and type in ipconfig. Input the IP address that comes out next to the word saying IPv4. Once you've put this into the UDP messaging UDPath endpoint section, followed by a colon zero, go to the left hand side of your screen, go to the engine subheading, click the rendering tab, and scroll down to default settings. Then click the advanced drop down menu, click frame buffer pixel format, and change it to RGBA 8 bit. You'll be prompted to restart your Unreal Engine scene as well here. Then close this project settings, and in the viewport, you need to create a virtual camera. So to do this, press add object on the top bar of your screen. Go to Virtual Production, Virtual Camera to After. Just drag this into your scene. Then, on your iPad or iPhone, type in your IP address of your computer into this little box just here. Don't worry that it says failed or like failed to connect. I think it might be sending some sort of signal to the computer when you do this at this point. Um, if you don't do it at this point, it doesn't seem to be working later on. So make sure you type in your IP address and press connect and wait for that fail message and press OK. Then, in your Unreal Engine viewport, go to the top left corner under the Windows tab and click Virtual Production, Live Link. Now in the Live Link window, press Source, Message Bus Source, and select your iOS device. It should come up with your iOS device's name here. Now, minimize this Live Link window, click on your virtual camera, and go to the right hand side of your screen in the Outliner tab. Make sure your virtual camera is still selected, and scroll down to the Details panel just below the Outliner. Select the VCAM underneath your virtual camera, go to Output, Providers, Index, Output, and make sure that it's ticked to be active. Make sure to change your live link subject to your iOS device, then scroll down a little bit more and tick enabled. Now when you click connect on your iPad, you should be able to have your iPad tracking translated into your Unreal Engine scene. You'll also see your Unreal scene on your iPad itself. And that's it, you're done. You just connected your iOS device using your iOS VCAM app to your, to your Unreal Engine scene in order to use the virtual camera in Unreal. So there are a whole bunch of different options that you can get inside the iPad app. So to start with, if we click on the bottom left two buttons, as you can see just here, you can navigate around your scene. It's a little bit blurry at the moment, I'm just gonna zoom out so you can probably see what's going on. But we're able to use these to navigate around the scene. Now, the next thing you can do, if we just go up, we have this button here that allows you to actually move certain objects. So if I select an object, say, that we forward to this, say I wanna move this object just here. I select it and I go to the transform button and I can move it up and down, just like the wrong one there. But you can see that you can rotate objects, you can scale them up and down. You can have a whole bunch of creativity with it. So this is really good if you want some sort of scene blocking, because you can kind of jump in, and get, if you feel a bit too sick with VR, you can use the iPad, and you can jump in and you can move things around on the fly, which is pretty cool. The next button up is the waypoints button. So you're able to set little flags here, and you can navigate between different points that you've, had, that you've got on your screen. So I've got a home point, flag in the distance and I've got a flag just here. Just click. We need to get off that. Click this button here to go to play through different sequences. Now I don't have any sequences recorded so that's not going to work. And the one above allows you to actually watch back sequences that you've recorded. Now to record a sequence, if you see out here in the bottom left corner, there's a little greyed out button. If I click the little red one next to that, there we go. So it unlocks that option for me and it makes the button allow, so you can see now it's red. I can click on it to record, and I can now record a take. You can see the take duration down the bottom, and I'm going to move around the iPad. And once I'm done, I can click on that, and it's finished take, doing that take record. Now, if I just want to unlock that and go to my recordings here, click on a 
take that I like and wash that through. The next thing you can do, if you go to the right hand side of your screen, if you click this bottom one here, you can adjust the, you, it freezes everything on your screen and you can kind of realign yourself. So if you're like finding that the alignment's kind of off, you can fix that here, you can use these to, to readjust and then you click it off and it will finish. Uh, allow you to, rip, your rib position will be reactivated. If you click the button above that, that's your focus settings. So you can just do that all the way down. So you'll notice sometimes it might like glitch out a little bit. Uh, if that happens, you can just click the disconnect button in the top right corner, click disconnect and go over to your computer and untick enabled. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the f-stop again. I'm gonna drop my lens down a little bit so I can see what's going on. So, if you click the focus button, you're able to adjust the focus of your camera. You see, so you can go, you know, lots of focus, not a lot of focus. Then if you want to click the one above that, that allows you to lock certain tracks on your device. So you can lock your boom, your truck, your dolly, you can lock your panning. So for example, if I lock my panning, I'm now unable to pan my device. So I can move in all the other axes, but I can't do that one. You can then click on stabilization, and you can change the speed of your stabilization. You can change the speed of your rotation. So if you find that like you're rotating and it's rotating way too much, you can slow that down or increase that here. Same with your translation. So if your scene is not like properly scaled to your room, uh, instead of, you know, you move like one step but it's moving 10 meters in your scene, that's where you can adjust the scaling speed here and allows me to do that. If I go one up from there, I can adjust the rack focus speed, my joystick sensitivity, and my film back as well. So I can go from like a Super 78 to a 16 by 9 regular film. This project is the Meerkat demo from Weta. There's also a snapshot button, which is kind of hidden down the bottom right corner. If you click that, it'll take a snapshot and save it into your, screen, into your scene uh, under the game snapshots folder. And if I go to the top corner, as you saw before, I've got the f-stop. You can see that's kind of blown out. I've got my stats, so that shows me what my frame rate is and what my certain angles are, what my focus distance is. And the final one is my lens setting. So I can go all the way down to like a zero millimeter, which looks crazy, all the way up to my like 135, and I can move around my scene. And as you can see as well, when I move here, it moves me throughout the scene. So I can move close to something, it moves me under there, you can move away and move away from there. And that's it. You just learned how to use the iOS VCAM app for Unreal Engine. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you like what you saw and want to see more, please do consider liking and subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, please do leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.